There is a spectrum of filmmaking. Let's review Venom 2020. Not the Venom you're thinking of. Venom stars Robin Westlake, Danielle Brocklebank, Neil Banks, McKenzie, and is directed by Robin Westlake. What's up, guys? It's time to do another patron review. I've been knocking out uh, some of these. I just did Teen Wolf. I'm doing this one. I'm doing The Goonies uh, next after this one because I'm really wanting to get these out. And I, these are movies that I've been looking forward to covering anyway. This movie is what I like to call no-budget filmmaking. There's there's low budget filmmaking and there's no budget filmmaking. He went into the journalist's workplace. The street value is in the millions. How does he get it for customs? I never said the mules were human. You officially got my attention. What does that mean? No budget filmmaking means that you can pretty much make the film on whatever you can grab around you, you know, as long as you have a camera and a location. It's usually one location, maybe two. It would almost be like, um, like say you're on the show Survivor and one of the challenges is, we need you to make a 50 minute movie using whatever is around you. You know, you have no budget whatsoever. Just this camera right here, go. That's pretty much what this is like. So it's, it's hard to give you a review to compare to an actual, you know, film, even a low budget film. Uh, you could look at no budget filmmaking as almost like um, a precursor to the actual movie. As a matter of fact, a, a lot of big, even big directors do this type of stuff where they go out and they'll have the crew actually film a, a particular scene. Like, for example, in Jurassic Park, uh, Spielberg actually had the crew try to figure out how they were going to do the... Um, I can't remember the name of the dinosaurs right now, you know, but it's kind of like gazelles. But it's a, the dinosaur word for gazelles, and they're just running through this field and the characters around there. They literally had the crew go out and act like, you know, they were dinosaurs, looking silly and all that. This is that type of movie. So anyway, let's get into the movie. Uh, this is a review for Why Hello There, General Kenobi. That is the name of this patron, or that's his profile name. I'm glad he gave me this movie to review. I don't know if he is actually associated with this film, um, but I'm going to give it a fair and honest review. And there are some merits to doing no budget filmmaking for sure. So it's kind of a win-win for me. But really you have three people in this movie total. And the story is one of them, uh, the female is uh, like a journalist and she's on the tail of this drug smuggler and he's using like uh, animals to smuggle drugs and she gets too close to it and he finds out and so he wants to put an end to her so they, they deliver a package that's an actual cobra to her door with her boyfriend and so the rest of this movie most of this movie i'd say like 75 85 percent of this movie is this couple in this room and they're fighting for their lives against this cobra that sounds like a story that could be told with a bigger budget um, but in this case, it's not that at all. So I don't have a King Cobra around. What am I going to do? You know, they literally use a toy Cobra. And you can tell, you know, that's the thing about no budget filmmaking. There's no hiding anything. You know, in practical effects, you can hide stuff like in the thing. You can hide stuff to make it look real. No budget filmmaking? No, you can't. All you have to depend on is an idea and your performances, your actors. And this is where the imagination is the most important. I think this is the ultimate test of no budget filmmaking. If you can form a scene and the objects in the scene are clearly not real, you know, a toy cobra snake, and somehow you can grab your audience by what is going on, then you have won in my eyes. Up front, elephant in the room, because this is no budget filmmaking, it's a really, really bad movie. It's, it's a horrible movie, and it's not something that you're ever going to watch again. But I found myself kind of in awe just of the experience. You know, like how often do you get to watch a movie like this that feels like a student project? You know, this, is, this is, would be like an assignment on the first week of filmmaking school. 
Basically, the, the teacher tells you, make your own film and use whatever you have. That's pretty much what this feels like. And there is literally like toy cars and trucks in this movie. There's a van where these two characters are sitting. They are the bad guys. And they're observing the, this couple fighting for their lives in this house. Because this is set in the UK. These are UK actors. It has that UK flair to it. You know, that British flair to it, which I like. I like British horror movies. Now, because there's three people in this movie, and the couple that's trapped in the flat is uh, the, the, the girl, Danielle Brocklebank, and her boyfriend, played by, I'm gonna say it's Robin Wesley. I think that's the director, Robin Wesley. But you could tell that there's some passion behind this. You know, you could tell that this was kind of a labor of love. Definitely some like nods to other popular movies like Terminator, like Aliens. But you know, a movie like this, of course, it's gonna be very self-aware. They're, they're gonna make fun of themselves along the way. Um, obviously, it doesn't take itself too seriously because it knows what it is. There are so, there's a couple funny moments in the movie, but really the thing that I was really honing in on is just the filmmaking techniques and how to put these scenes together with literally, I guess, no backbone, you know, no production design that, you know, can stand up to like even low budget filmmaking. You have to find your transitions when you have no resources to make competent transitions and for some reason it kind of works for me i looked at it as you know somebody who's never made a movie before this would teach you how to put a scene together it, it would at least give you an idea of how a scene can be constructed and how to get from a to b because when you're doing an hour an hour and a half story to get from the first scene to the last scene it's an ordeal it's going to take you a long time to figure that out and it can be exhausting. And so when you look at it at such a basic level like this movie is, it's almost like everybody's naked on set, if that makes sense. It's the most vulnerable form of filmmaking ever because all the warts, uh, all the bruises, it's all right there on the screen, you know? So you can kind of just marvel in it. It's like doing a, like a school project on stage naked. That, that's what this feels like, you know, because you're burying everything out there because you have no budget. But, you know, staying on the camera techniques and, and using a, like a toy snake and somehow making that work through close-ups, through uh, a quick transitions. There's a couple of fight scenes in this, especially in the last act, that I actually was gut laughing and, and not in a bad way. I was having a good time when they had kind of the big showdown at the end and there's this fight scene and I was like, it's better than Resident Evil, the final chapter. I'll give them that for sure. You know, you can tell that the filmmakers were having a good time putting together th this little fight scene. It's almost like they were working their way up to that. And I could see the fun that they were having filming this scene and I enjoyed it actually. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to give this a rating. Uh, or I guess if I'm giving it a rating, I'm rating it in terms of, you know, no budget filmmaking, okay? And for that, I would give it a humdrum, for sure. Just in terms of the, the filmmaking, uh, using the resources that you have around, really finishing the movie. It's not an easy task. And so if anything, I think stuff like this inspires people that have never made a film, have maybe even never been to film school. and it's just a testament that you can do this anybody can do this if you have an idea and you have the time you can put together a story you know and you can you can have a, a finished film and I, i'm sure that's something to be proud of at the end of the day once you're done hey i did it i finished a film now maybe this is a stepping stone to getting to the next level and actually making something with more of a budget you know something more competent and i, I would imagine that like say Steven Spielberg probably goes back and sees things that he did when he was like a teenager. And, you know, that was the beginning. That was the first breadcrumb that led to, you know, M Munich. Munich is a kick-ass movie. Was I just refer referencing Knocked Up? I don't know why I did that, but yeah, you, you, get, you get my point. But anyway, yeah, that's my review for Venom 2020. Not the Venom you're thinking of. Um, if you've seen this movie, definitely let me know down in the comments what you think. As a matter of fact, I would like you guys to get in the comments and tell me like a no budget film that you would recommend checking out. And it could be from like a big director, like say a Robert Rodriguez when he first started or something like that. It's fun to watch these movies and see all the, the naked cogs come together and uh, you know, 
basically building this creation. Uh, also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We do Free for Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dumbs on all my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Drum Dumb out.